All right, it was a wild weekend of football for the newly formed United Football League. The road favors the D.C. Defenders, who closed as minus four and a half point favorites, ultimately fell 12 to 27 to the San Antonio Brahmas. But it was closer and more competitive game than the final score might indicate. So I'm going to go ahead and talk you through it. Um, So first and foremost, you know, the game ended for the D.C. Defenders. They only scored four field goals. Um, The offense looked good. It was able to move down the field, get into field goal range, obviously pretty consistently. Uh, uh, You know, positive notes as well. The quarterback, Jordan Tayamu, uh, nice performance with 235 passing yards, 25 completions, no touchdowns, um, one interception, was sacked three times, uh, you know, only had a 55% 55.6% completion percentage. So we're definitely going to see that go up. I think if that goes up, you know, and the, the passing offense stays high, they're going to be able to score uh, on this offense. Now you might ask why, you know, was the, you know, why 55%? Brahmas are, act, Brahmas look legit. I won't go into too much detail, but you know, the Brahmas look legit. Well, let's, you know, give them their flowers. But Tayamu, still the leading passer for week one in the UFL with 235 yards. Um, so let's give him his flowers there. Ty Scott led the receiving core for the DC defenders, uh, with 87 yards on six targets, four catches led the UFL as well. So week one, the leading passer and the leading receiver for DC defenders players. So we like to see that, uh, other players that had four catches for the defenders, for Brandon Smith, who had 47 yards. Briley Moore, tight end, who had 28 yards. Alex Ellis had three receptions, another tight end. He had 28 yards. Uh, notable, though, is that Ellis had six targets, only three catches. Uh, Briley Moore did haul in all four of his catches. Uh, as far as the running game is concerned, the running game for, oh, I'll also highlight Kiki QT, four receptions, only 14 yards. Uh, caught all four of his targets, and he did have a touchdown nullified by a uh, unsportsmanlike that eventually ended up leading to a near pick six, which was and ultimately was the game. Uh, but Kiki QT did catch a red zone touchdown, and at one point, you know, everybody was really, really happy about that and super excited. Uh, that moment was uh, overshadowed by a sportsmanlike incident from a teammate of his. Uh, we'll get there later. Um, so for the rushing attack, honestly, Cameron Harris led the way. He had eight attempts for 21 yards. Tayamu had three attempts for 10 yards. He was our second leading rusher. As, uh, then we had Puka Williams only had one rush, but he had nine yards. Um, I do want to also highlight that Puka Williams had two receptions. No, uh, or said, I'm sorry, it said two catches, but I think those, but this here, two catches, no yards. Um, but also he had no targets, so I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, Puka Williams, though, he did serve as the kickoff returner and the punt returner. Had 122 kickoff return yards and on five kickoff uh, returns. So that, that's pretty dang good. That's 122 yards, uh, you know what I'm saying? So maybe we should be giving him the ball a little bit more uh, as a running back. And as for the as far as punting, he had three returns um, for 35 yards. So, offensively, things were humming, except for when we got down to where the scoring opportunities were. Now, I'm going to blame chalk that up a lot of that to Reggie Barrow's play calling. They just weren't very aggressive. There were many opportunities to go for it on fourth and short. Well, honestly, they didn't do it. I don't know if that comes from the fact that they know that their run game probably couldn't do it. But as far as offensively moving the ball with their receivers, again, they had the highest output quarterback of the week and best receiver of the week, Um, you know, and that was him completing 55% of his completions, 55% of his passes. He still led the league in passing yards. So I don't think that that can be understated. I don't want people to start freaking out necessarily and worrying about the D.C. Defenders offense just because we did not find the end zone. A lot of that, I think, comes down to, the conservative play calling. And honestly, the Brahmas, I think, caught a lot of people off guard. And it was a road game. So, uh, you know, these things are going to happen. 
overall, uh, you know, they were able to like I said to score 12 points on four field goals. They converted five of 14 third downs, but zero of one fourth downs that they did attempt. I think that was late in the game. Um, penalties, as far as penalties on the team, they had three penalties that gained them first downs. But, you know, I mean, they really had a lot of things go their way. They just could not score. Uh, ultimately, that ended up costing the game. So, let's go ahead and talk about the defense, and then we'll talk about, well, let's talk about the game quickly. Essentially, in the fourth quarter, uh, the Brahmas, you know, in the fourth quarter, they had a, a great chance to 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 tie it up uh, or, or get really close time. I think they made it 20-21. Jordan Tayamu throws a, a dime, a beautiful bomb pass down the left sideline uh, to Ty Scott. Who's wide? I mean, catches it. Beautiful catch. Makes a little yak yard, even yardage. I think even out of that. So they're down. They're really at this point. There was a seventy-five uh, play drive. I think that moved them down there. So they're really cool. I mean, eventually, what this drive ended up being. They get down there. They're so, you know, they get the forty-three yard pass. It's in the fourth quarter. This is just start the fourth quarter. At this point, the game is still twenty. It's twenty-one to twelve. So, you know, we're within punching distance. Uh, and, you know, all of a sudden we have all oh, your 14 minutes left, 14 ish minutes left, and we're down by the red zone. They throw another pass to Scott. He drops that one. I get the next play, and then Kiki QT catches a touchdown. But unfortunately, after the play, offensive player uh, guard Gene DeLance, number 59, spit on one of the Brahmas players. And because of that, the he gets flagged and the refs call on sportsmanlike. He gets ejected, but while they're figuring all of this out, while this is happening, you know, everybody's worried they're gonna get the touchdown. Well, yeah, it happened after the touchdown, so you know, he's not, you know, the touchdown stands, they're just gonna get, you know, the penalty yards now are probably gonna get tacked onto the point after. And people are trying to figure this out because this is a new situation. Well, while that's happening, Wade Phillips and his staff have a chance to re watch the play, and lo and behold, the same player who is now getting his team moved back, you know, 15 yards uh, for their point after attempts. On top of the fact that he's just got himself ejected as a starter, he also jumped off sides. Um, and the staff sees that. And they have what's called a super challenge in the United Football League. So the coach is able to challenge a essentially a ruling on the field uh, if it isn't challenged, if, you know, as a, as a play is called. Uh, versus the officials, pretty much anything. So because they have time to see this, he can now challenge that because they missed that call that he was offside, he can challenge that and they'll go back and watch the play again. And if they see you know, a flag that they missed, they can throw it now after the fact on that same, you know, as long as the next play hasn't happened. So because 59 had done all this, now they're able to go back, watch this. The super challenge is the ruling. Of, is they see it. He also gets called for offside, and that overturns the touchdown. So now instead of going down the field 75 yards and scoring a touchdown and then you know being able to almost tie up the game, now the touchdown is negated, and they're pushed back 15 yards. There was a reminder they were at like the five or six-yard line when Kiki T scored his touchdown. So now they're at – the you know I think it's third and twenty second first and twenty or second and twenty or something they're way way back now and they have don't have any points and they lost a starter um, and so then what happens you know we're still hopeful but eventually what happens is I think Tiamo takes a sack gets the wind knocked out of him has to leave for a couple of plays the backup comes in runs a couple of plays Tiamu comes back out and immediately throws what's essentially almost a pick six it ends up being six points for the offense he throws a pick. To the right hand side, it was just not a great throw. It was not a great play call. I mean, you could tell everybody was out of whack at that point, and it just gets picked off and almost house called by the cornerback. I forget his name for the Brahmas. He took it back about seven, about 85, 90 yards. The only thing that kept him from going into the end zone was Kelvin Harmon did not give up on the defensive play. He ran all the way down the field, he crossed the entire field and tackled him right around the five or six yard line. But now the Brahmas get the ball there, and we go from being an almost tie ball game 
to the very next play, the uh, the Brahmas score another touchdown, and now the game is essentially uh, so the game is essentially over at this point. But all of this uh, momentum shift, all this momentum happened right in the fourth quarter. So it was a really good game overall. There is hope for the 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 season overall for the defenders. Don't don't think because they lost this game that they're a bad team or their season's a wash. They looked like they have the players to get things done. Uh, some of the things I really love to see, Isaiah Johnson had a big hit early in the game. Great tackler, forced a fumble, which was picked up by DJ Swearinger, which ultimately ended up getting them three points. So, you know, the defense did help them quite a bit uh, there. Um, other things I wanted to point out was, um, you know, we're going to have to see how Barlow's play calling is. I don't think he, I don't think he's going to be long for his head coaching job just from if he's going to be, you know, if he's going to be this conservative because it ended up costing them in this game. In a league where you can effectively go down the field on two drives, essentially think about this. If you do it right, you can go down two times and you can score 18 points. You know what I mean? You can score the three. And then you score your your you know your six points on your touchdown. And then you could score your three point uh, point after. And if you do that twice, that's the same as what is that six seven? That's six field goals. So just take some. I think taking the risk. I think people are going to start to understand that these are big swings. You know what I mean? That you you know and. And there's no reason not to take them, especially week one. I was just a little bit disappointed in what I saw there. But overall, I like the team that they've assembled. They, they you know, they seem to trust each other, have a good system. They were able to move the ball, like I said. Um, last thing I will say is um, I'm looking at the defensive stats. Quite a few, you know, good tackling across the board. We ended up, the defenders ended up with five tackles for loss, only one sack. Uh, that's credited to Malik Fisher. Uh, who had two tackles for loss. But I will say that, uh, you know, coming into the season, there was a, a little bit of hype around camp, around um, D- Davin Bellamy uh, as a pass rusher. And I found this interesting. He actually did have, I mean, what to me, I, I would call it a sack. Uh, they, the Brahmas went for a two-point conversion, and Bellamy sacked him. Uh, so they ended up not getting that, one of their two-point conversions that they went for. Um, and that was not credited to him anywhere. And I think that's I think that's a big miss by I think we need to just everyone in football needs to start paying more attention to defense number one. But that sack took two points off the board. You know what I mean? Like he himself stopped two points from going on the board. And we're not even gonna acknowledge that anywhere in the defensive score sheet. Um, you know, it's kind of like when guys get sacks uh you know that are called safeties they don't go down as sacks for whatever reason they go down and it's like that's not only a sack that's a sack that scored points so to me i feel like this is something that needs to be fixed i remember with my own eyes seeing bellamy do this i turned what would have been an eight point play into a eight point drive into a six point drive you know with his sack and it just wasn't credited um May, you know, so we need to get that track. People need to pay attention to that. It wasn't just a loss of distance. It wasn't just a loss of down. He actually cost the offense on the field real points with that sack. Um, and it just wasn't credited because, again, I don't really understand why. So overall, what did we learn this week? We learned that it's going to be a conservative play calling. Uh, it looks like from Reggie Barlow in the group, but the offense is humming even with the loss of their two main receivers last from last season who went on to the nfl we have guys that picked up right where they left off they like to spread the ball around with you know multiple guys getting over four tar four to six targets ty scott six targets brandon smith seven targets uh, alex ellis six targets kelvin Harmon actually got six targets i didn't even realize that so you know they're passing the ball around um we get some more completions in there and, you know, some of these touchdowns that won't get negated uh, and we'll see what happens. I'm interested to see what the league uh, does and what the, the, the coaching staff end up doing with 59, because in my opinion, in my eyes, his one action of unsportsmanlike conduct uh, spitting on the opponent ultimately costs the DC defenders a road win to start the season, uh, in my opinion. So yeah. That's it for for us for today. Um, 
great first week of UFL football. Stick around for, for, for you know all of our coverage on news hub follow me on twitter at 50 shades of drunk and we you know i yeah i'm like i'm writing and covering the ufl this season i am covering the dc defenders kind of as a, a beat writer i guess you would say and hoping to really help push the league you know get it off its feet because i watched really good football this week I'm not, I mean, I'm not blowing smoke up anyone's ass. I never would, never will, uh, never have, but a good football game. You know what I mean? I mean, there was some, there was a lot of drama, a lot of intrigue. And that was just, I didn't tell you the DC defender, the, the greatest offensive play of the week happened for the, uh, uh, maybe of all football time happened in this game. The Brahmas did it. And I didn't even touch on it. So it was good football all around. Uh, if, if they have a replay of this week on Fox, check it out. It was a good game. It was highly entertaining. The sideline interviews were really, really good, uh, really fun to hear from the players. Maybe give them, you know, a minute to 90 seconds after the play uh, or after the, you know, we don't have to get right down there in their face. As soon as the play is over, give them a minute or two, talk to their boys, think about it, you know, get to crack their jokes. Um, and then, you know, then maybe we'll ask them. But, yeah, thank you. Like, subscribe, follow. And until next time.